Hey there. We're live today. We're going to be talking about pecans, but we're going to allow people to log on. We're going to talk about grafting today. So we'll take a few minutes and allow people to get logged in. It's a beautiful day to talk about grafting because it's cloudy and overcast and damp. spend a few minutes talking about flowers. Everybody knows what a flower is, obviously. Like this beautiful grandma's yellow rose. Beautiful rose, and that's a flower. But did you ever think about what kind of flower a pecan has? A pecan actually has two flowers. Actually has two flowers. So you see this flower on this beautiful rose, but a pecan has two flowers. You have these things that hang down. Those are the male flowers. Some people call them catkins and a lot of people think when a pecan they call them tassels sometimes but those are the male flowers. But then a pecan also has what we call female flowers. Female flowers. And so here are your little female flowers right there. So we don't have a beautiful rose on a pecan tree, but it's a beautiful sight when you see these female flowers coming onto your trees. So anyway, just a little lesson in flowers about pecans before we get started this afternoon on grafting. People logging in. So what time is it? Take a few more minutes here, let people get logged in. We'll take another minute and then we'll get started this afternoon. So the sound is okay, I'm assuming. So is it any indication of where people are signing on from? All over Texas. All over Texas. Well good, glad to have you this afternoon. We'll give it one more minute and we'll get started here. Y'all can listen to the birds sing, chirp, see the trees in the background. All right, so good afternoon, everybody, and rather howdy, everybody. This is Larry Stein with Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service. And so today we're gonna be talking about grafting, and we're specifically gonna talk about grafting pecan trees. Now you might wonder, well, why do you need to graft a pecan tree? I mean, why would you wanna do that? You know, can't you just plant a pecan and get a tree? And sure you can, but the trees don't come true to type from the seed. So to mass propagate varieties, we've had to learn how to graft these trees. And so it's been around a long, long time. Extension horticulturists from Texas have taught many, many thousands of people how to graft. And so today we're gonna give you a lesson in grafting pecan trees. So you need a, a few simple tools before you can start the process. You need a young tree that's actively growing. Something like these right here is what you need. You need some graft wood. You need some graft wood. And so this graft wood was cut back in January. It was cut in January. And then it was put in a Ziploc bag. And so you see today that this wood is totally dormant when we put it on the tree. So this is a must. You have to have this stored graft wood in order to do the two techniques that we're gonna be doing today. So that's one thing that you need. The next thing you need to have is you need to have a sharp knife. It's got to be extremely sharp. You know, a lot of people think, well, the reason they cut themselves is because of sharp knife. But in reality, the, in reality, just the opposite is true. If the knife is dull, you got to strain a lot more to make the cuts and it's more likely that you will cut yourself. So today we're going to use a grafting knife. You need some kind of shears to do this inlay bark graft, which is the first technique we're going to do. You need some kind of saw, and then you need 
uh, nails, if you're going to be nailing the graft into the tree, some small 18 gauge wire nails, about three quarters inch. And then you need some kind of material to secure the bag and the aluminum foil to the tree. Years ago, before we discovered aluminum foil in bags, we had to use these wax melters and carry them up into the tops of the tree with us. But today, all we have to use is aluminum foil re which reflects sunlight in a plastic bag and that keeps the graft from drying out. Now there's one other thing that you gotta have before you do these techniques and that is you gotta have confidence guys. You gotta go out there and you gotta believe you can make it grow. I am of the opinion that if you don't believe you just will not go out there. So anyway that's the last thing that you have to have. So today the first technique we're going to do is the inlay bark graft. Now this tree right here is an ungrafted seedling, but if you look right over here, this particular tree right here, here is the graft union on this tree right here. Rough bark right here, this is where the graft was, this is where the tree was grafted. So you see that graft union. Now there's people when they're going to graft trees, they can't come in ahead of time and cut the tree off. And then when it starts to grow, they will come in and regraft the tree. Now, that variety was not desirable for that particular location, so that's why they're gonna regraft that tree. So we're gonna cut this tree off and work on it. We like to work these trees at a nice height. If you're working these trees in a bottom or something like that where deer can get to them or cows or whatever, cow can always reach a foot higher than you think they can. So you got to put it up high out of the way. First thing we do is we cut the tree off at a nice smooth spot. Make a single cut. And then if you notice, if you look at the end of the tree here, trees are not perfectly round. You know, everybody thinks trees are round, but there's always a flat spot. And so this flat spot is where you want to put the graft on the tree. The other thing is the bark has to slip. If the bark doesn't slip, you can't put the graft on the tree. And so if you look right here, you see how the wood easily slips away. So we know that we're able to graft this tree. So the next thing we do is we prepare the area where we're gonna put our graft on the tree. Again, we're looking at this flat spot, which is right over here. Notice we've left a couple of nurse limbs below the tree. You don't always have to do that, but if you can, that's really, really good. Now this rough gray material is really hard to cut through. And so we tell a lot of people, you know, go ahead and make just a light, slight cut into the rough bark so it's easier to make the other cut. And so now we have a nice spot where we can put the graft on the tree. So the next thing we do is we take our piece of graft wood out of our ice chest. Notice we brought it to the orchard in an ice chest. You match the size wood with the tree that you're gonna be doing. So like I have a really big piece of graft wood here. Obviously you couldn't put that on that tree, but this little one here should work really, really nicely. So the first thing you do is you cut the wood off. The wood was not sealed, so we have to get down to live tissue. So we're gonna cut it off right here. And then we're gonna make our cut into the stick. And so you hold the knife in the palm of your hand and you cut away from you. You cut down to the middle of the wood and you cut all the way out. And typically you like to make that in one cut. Now, it's rare that you can make it in one cut, and so basically you shave it down till you get it very, very flat. And then you turn it over, you make a chisel cut, and that allows us to insert the stick between the bark and the wood. A tree has three parts. The middle part is the wood. They used to make furniture out of wood, they don't anymore. Then you have the outside, which is the bark, and in between the bark and the wood, you have the living cells. And so that's where this stick needs to go. So what you do is you put the graft stick on the tree, you hold it in place, and you cut straight down on one side. Move your hand to 
the opposite side and make the exact same cut. And then when you do that, this little sliver of bark here peels up and you insert the graft stick in between the bark and the wood and you push it down. Now it doesn't go all the way down, it goes down, there's a slight slant at the bottom that you leave there. And then this bark is fairly thin and so we're going to tie this graft in today with grafting tape. If the bark was thicker we would go ahead and, and uh, nail it in. So I start at the bottom with my wrap and you wrap from the bottom all the way to the top. And notice we're just leaving that little flap in place. Get to the top. And then we're going to wrap it all the way back down to the ground. To, not to the ground, to where we started. To where we started. Tie this off right here. And now the graft is secure to the tree. The next thing we do is we put our aluminum foil over it. Aluminum foil reflects sun, keeps the temperature down. Aluminum foil has two sides, right? A shiny side, a dull side. There's a lot of people who have never thought about that, but you try to put the shiny side up, tear it down the middle. The middle goes here, and then we slip it around the grass. Then the last thing we do is we put a poly bag over it. I like to cut the corner of the poly bag off. Cut the corner of the poly bag off, slip it down over the graft stick. You don't want to knock the buds off. And then you take your tape here and you tie off the bag. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to seal the graft so it doesn't dry out. The poly bag allows for gas exchange. But it keeps the moisture in meaning that the graft has time to, to heal. Then we tie off the bag down here, but realize we only tie the bag off where it's covered with foil. So we don't want to tie the bag off way down here, because then we have exposed wood inside the bag. You only want to tie it off where the bag is covered with aluminum foil. Tie it off, and then the last thing we do is we put a little glue on top, and that essentially seals the graft. Now had we sealed our wood, had we sealed our wood, then we wouldn't have to do that step. Now we want this tree to sit here two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. If it grows tomorrow, we just will saw it off and start over. We have to have time for that union to take place. So if we don't have a period of time where it doesn't grow, that's not gonna happen. Now this is called the inlay bark graft. And look how much of the tree we took off. You know, I've done these grafting demonstrations all over the state. And so we've done some in people's front yard. And they're standing right there watching you. And you saw the tree off and they about fall over. I mean, most people can't handle taking half the tree off. And so there's another technique that we can use. And it's called the four flap graft or banana graft. And so it works really well on these small sized trees about this right here. They come up in your flower bed, come up in your flower bed, squirrels planted them, whatever. And so we call this technique the four flap graft. It could be called a banana graft. I call it the homeowner graft because you don't have to cut the whole tree off and a lot of people like that. So what you have to do though is you have to match the size wood to the size tree that you have. And so we go back to our ice chest and we frock this wood. And so we find a piece here and it looks like we can put the graft about right here with this particular piece of wood. Notice it's about the same size as that tree right there. And so that's where we'll put this graft on the tree. So the first thing we do is we cut this tree off Cut this tree off. And I, I should have I stopped there and asked if there was any questions about the inlay bark graft. Uh, but notice that we've cut this tree off and we've cut the stick off now. And so 
they line up perfectly they're the same size and so the next step is we take out our third hand you got to have three hands to do this and so our third hand is a little rubber band and so you put that little rubber band over here and you slip it down on the tree push it down fairly well and then you take your knife and you make a T or a cross from top of the graph on top of the tree because you want to have four cuts that are spaced apart at the same distance and so now you cut simply into the bark to the wood in these four lines so here's one right here and the nice thing about having a tree in a container is you can move the container to make the cuts there's two here is three and then we have one more and that one will be four so we make that cut there and now we see if it's going to peel and so the bark comes away here's one sliver right one flap two flaps three flaps four flaps and so that's where it gets the name four flap also like a banana you see how it peels down like a banana so we roll the rubber band back up so that it doesn't dry out and now we're ready to work on our graph stick again you cut away from yourself you want to cut down to the wood and it's real easy to not make these cuts right so I'm gonna make one wrong this one I'm gonna make wrong and I'll show you why here in a minute so that's one here's two here's three and here's four so now we go back and you see we have a sliver of bark and then we have white sliver of bark sliver of bark and white white is the wood this one here you don't see any white we didn't cut it deep enough you got to make sure that you cut down to the white so now we've made it right and so we have four so now we close our knife and we roll down our little rubber band we peel the bark slivers down here's where you got to be careful that you don't cut one of them off you cut the middle out stick goes in stick goes in roll your third hand up there your rubber band and each of the slivers that we cut on the graph stick then is covered by the bark and see how nice they line up right there like that and so the nice thing about this graft is you have a lot more potential for it to heal so the next thing we do is we seal it off we tie it off so again what I do is I'm going to use this budding tape grafting tape poly tape this is white a lot of times it comes in green I wrap all the way to the top and then all the way back down now there are some people that actually take that little rubber band out they roll it up and take it out and they use it for the next tree I'm pretty cheap. I just go ahead and leave the rubber band in there. Shoot, we can buy another rubber band. So we wrap it all the way back down. And now you pull it really tight here. You want to have it really tight so that you have good contact between the bark and your graft stick. Wrap it all the way back down. And then we tie it off. You know, there's some people that wrap it under. I have always tied it off. I don't want it coming loose. And then the last thing we do is we, we go ahead and use the aluminum foil and the plastic bag as well. Now, there's some people that when they get here, they stop. They don't go to all this effort to put the aluminum foil on there. But I go ahead and put the aluminum foil all on, same routine as before. Cut the corner of the bag off. You know, some people will bite it off. I think you get better results when you cut it off. Slip the bag down over. Careful not to knock the buds off. And then you tie this off right here. Tie it off. And you want to be sure that you get that sealed off well so that you don't lose moisture. And remember what we said a while ago, we only tie the bag where it's covered with aluminum foil. So we tie it off here. And then, of course, the last step is we come in here and seal the wood just like we did before. Now, again, 
This graft has to sit here two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. You know, we it has to sit here a while for the union to take place. If if it does, if it starts to grow right away, oh, you know, it has not taken place. And so, a lot of people when they do first time, you feel like all oh, thumb, but you watch it every day. You watch it every day. Well, is it growing? Is it growing? And so it's really neat, it's really neat when they actually come out, when they actually come out. And so here's one that we did about three weeks ago and you see how these buds are coming out. And so it started to grow now. And so the first one you ever did, when they do that, you just go hallelujah. I mean, you're just really, really excited uh, that you got it to grow. And so you have to have confidence, a few simple tools to make it work. Now the biggest challenge, and we're gonna show you some aftercare on one of these here directly, but I wanna show you one other technique. It's left, a few minutes left, and so I'm gonna show you one other technique. And this is the way all nursery trees are done. All nursery trees are, are uh, patch budded. They're patch budded, and typically they're done low to the ground. They're either patch budded or whip crafted. But most of the ones in Texas, they will come in here and they will patch bud the tree. And all you need to do for a patch bud is you need a double bladed knife and you need buds that haven't forced out, buds that haven't forced out. And so that is the problem. So like most of y'all are sitting there at home and said, well, I don't have any stored wood. I didn't cut it or the nursery can't get me any wood. And so, you know, I, I don't have any wood. I would check with the Texas Pecan Growers Association though because typically they have some sources of wood and so check with those guys. But if you go to a tree like today, here's a shoot that was growing on a tree, you see the leaves right here, there's always buds that haven't forced out. So there is a bud right there that hasn't started to grow, but we know the bark will slip because of the growth of the tree. And so as long as we have a double bladed knife, we can make that work. So you take this wood today off of the tree, and then the next thing you have to have is you have to have a double bladed knife. So here's a double bladed knife. It's a double bladed grafting knife. Basically it's two grafting knives put together. These are real, real expensive. They cost a lot of money. And so if you don't do this a whole lot, then it's hardly worth the money. And so I'm a cheapie. I use what we call an Aggie butter, an Aggie butter. So here is an Aggie butter, and an Aggie butter is nothing, butter, B-U-D-D-E-R, butter is nothing more than a piece of wood. It's a piece of wood, a little block of wood. This block of wood is about an inch thick, and it's about four inches long. We have a hole in it, and we cut, we drill a hole this away. About a, that's about a two inch hole that we drill this away. And then we put one-sided razor blades with screws right here, so now we have a double bladed knife and we call this an Aggie butter and so the first thing you do with your Aggie butter is you put it on the tree you press the bark into the tree you press the knife into the tree and you only go one way we go one way so now we've cut that and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our knife now and make a cut right here and see if we get a window to open up. And so here, this window will open up because the bark is slipping. So here, see how the window opens up? Y'all see that right there? See how the window opens up? So we press that back down. And now we take our Aggie butter and we put it on our, on our shoot that we took off the tree that has these buds that haven't forced out. So here's a prominent one right here. So what you wanna do is you look through the hole to see the bud, you press the knife into the wood and you go one way only. And then you take your straight knife and you make two straight cuts here, one on the other side. Go to the four corners. And then you pop the bud out. See how you pop the bud out? Sliver bark, bud. And so now you put it in.
open your window, put it in. So that means it's perfectly aligned on three sides, top, bottom, and side. And then you tear off a little bit here so that the bark will overlap. So you see it in there right now? And so now all we have to do is we have to wrap it up. So we take our tape and you can either leave the bud out in other words, don't wrap over the bud, or you can wrap over the bud. It really doesn't matter. You know, in this case, we're going to leave the bud out. So we're wrapping this away. Obviously, if you're left-handed, you would wrap the opposite way. So you wrap this all the way up. So again, this is how all nursery trees are done. And the whole time that we sat here and talked about it and did one, commercial butters will have done five trees. It's incredibly fast how, how good and fast these butters are, these commercial guys that bud trees. But that's all there is to that technique right there. You're done right there. You don't have to put the bag, the foil, the whatever, so you're done. Again, that needs to sit there two weeks, you know, three weeks. And then what you do is you cut the tree off to force the bud. You come back in three weeks, you cut the tape, make sure it's still green. If it's still green, you cut the top and that forces the bud to grow, forces the bud to grow. So those are three techniques that you can use to propagate pecan trees. Like I said, the first time you try it, you're gonna be all thumbs. What we're gonna do now is show you a little bit of aftercare on some trees. You know, the easy part is getting the graft on the tree and getting it to grow, like this right here. Now this particular graft is really, really strong when you first do it. This graft over there, it has to totally heal over before it's totally safe. And so you have to do, it, do a little bit of aftercare after you put these grafts on the tree. And so we're gonna show you now a four flap graft that was done last year. It was done last year. And uh, we're gonna show you the aftercare of this particular tree. So here is a tree that a four flap graft was put on this past year. And so here's the graft right here. And it's getting dominated by the rootstock. Now notice the color, color of the foliage here. See the purple tinge of the foliage? So that tells us this is a juvenile tree. This tree has never been grafted. And so if you buy a tree from the nursery and you plant it, and the foliage that comes out is this purple tinge, you don't have a improved tree. You have a juvenile seedling variety. And so you really need to be aware of that. So this juvenile foliage is right here. So here is where the graft was put on the tree. You see right here is where the graft was put on the tree. And so we need to come in here and keep these other shoots from dominating this particular tree. So some of these shoots are gonna come off. Some of these shoots are gonna come off. So no, notice how we're making the graft dominant now. We like to leave these lower ones here because they make food for the tree. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take all this stuff that we left on there last year. So what I'm telling you is with those banana grass, four flap grass, you can leave this on all year. It's not gonna hurt anything. Then the next year, you go ahead and take all of this off. So here's the top tie that we did last year. Here's the poly bag right here. Here is the tape. So then here is the aluminum foil. Remember we put the aluminum foil? And there's our tie that we put on there. So you take your knife and you cut all of this away. You cut all of this away. And so now, see this how we have this bulge down here? So we have a perfectly strong tree that's totally ready to go there. And so we usually prune this to, we have one, two, three, four shoots. And so all you do is you pinch the tip. See how we pinch the tip? And we leave one strong shoot. We leave one shoot to dominate. And so this shoot here will become our central leader. That will become our central leader. If you notice also, we have a wire cage here, you know, deer deer will eat these things to the ground so if you're in a deer population or if you have a lot of deer you got to put a cage around them till they get up above the browse height and so that is the aftercare on a 
four flap grab. We're going to show you one other thing, and this is the aftercare, aftercare on a, on a inlay bark grab. So if you look over here towards the field, you see these young trees that were inlay bark grafted. This one over here was actually a banana grass. It's a banana grass. And then we have one up here, which was a, a inlay bark grass. It was an inlay bark grass. And so it was done last year. It was done last year is when this grass was done. And so here it is on the tree. Here it is on the tree. So this is the improved variety. This all grew in, in one year. And so you see down here where we tied it, this grass was tied into the tree. When you do an inlay bark graft, you have to undo this top tie. But see how the, the tree is just about healed over. And then here, of course, is our brace board. That's the board that has held this graft in place. And so we can go ahead and take this off now. This tie tape can come off. In this case, we're going to take the entire brace board off, brace board off. So you see how it is about healed over right there. And so this graft, it has to get totally healed over before it's totally safe. So this is aftercare on an inlay bark graft. So like I said, there's three main ways that you can propagate pecan trees. You have the inlay bark graft, which you can use on shoots, that, uh, limbs that are about an inch, up to say two inches in diameter. You can do it on bigger limbs, but it's best not to. Then you have the four flap or banana graft, which you can, you can use on smaller trees. And it, it works quite well. You don't have to cut the entire tree off. And then of course you have the patch bud. And realize patch bud, it's kind of complicated with pecans. You have to have a double blade at night. You can't make your aggie butter, uh, but it will work quite well. But just remember, first time you ever do it, all thumbs, all thumbs guys. So go out there with confidence. Practice makes perfect. And the world needs more pecan grafters. Oh, 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 we forgot to almost answer the most important question of the day. It was about grafting mesquite trees. Grafting mesquite trees. You know, we had the promo. Can we put a pecan on a mesquite tree? Can you put a peach on a mesquite tree? The answer obviously is no. But you can graft a mesquite tree. You can put another mesquite on top of a mesquite. So in reality, you can graft mesquite. And so they are working with some improved varieties of mesquite where you can grow lumber trees on native mesquite. And so that is a possibility. You know, they always tell you in, in school it has to be the same genus and species. And you know, uh, it's in a book, you gotta try. So I did try to put a pecan on a mesquite. Obviously it didn't grow. So you can't graft pecan on mesquite, but you can put mesquite on there. So we have more information on agri-horticulture. Thank you all for joining in. Have a great rest of your day.